Hi folks and welcome back to my YouTube channel and this time we are going to prepare for sandblasting Old Rusty or at least the cabin that is and I know it's been a while since I've been online with a new video but I've been working a lot and I investigated a lot of time and effort and a bit of experience in abrasive blasting because I don't want to screw up the cabin and I've read all kind of articles uh, about soda blasting and abrasive blasting with Garnet and other products. And to be honest, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do because there was so much news around. So this video is going to be all about abrasive blasting and what you need because I went to a place uh, with professionals who explained me everything in detail. I got the stuff and I've done a lot of trials and you'll see that in this video. So if you're interested in abrasive blasting, not necessarily old rusty, keep watching. So what is abrasive blasting? We used to call it sandblasting, but nowadays it's called abrasive blasting because you can use different products to actually blast paint or rust off a surface. Now there are different products that you can use and it's a bit like your paint gun. Uh, if you have a paint gun, you have compressed air and that compressed air carries uh, the particles of the paint and then they hit the surface of a car or a door or whatever you're trying to paint. With abrasive blasting, we do exactly the same. You have a high velocity airflow and that airflow carries small particles, abrasive particles. And there's all kinds of abrasive particles and we call that media. Now there's a lot of fuss about it on the internet about soda blasting. And I have soda sitting right here. Uh, and this is the soda guys and I'll show you that in a few minutes in closer detail. We call that media and soda is quite good but I am not going to blast Old Rusty with soda and have very good reasons for that but we'll talk about that in a few minutes. You also have other products like a garnet and that's a very small Australian mineral and I'll show you that in a minute as well on how that looks like and I'm going to use this one. There's a very good reason for that because soda is not going to remove rust. It will remove paint, it won't damage the metal, it won't take anything off the metal, so your metal will be intact, but it's not removing uh, any uh, rust or so. So, And I have some rust on Old Rusty that I need to remove, so uh, I can't use that. In addition, uh, soda will have a side effect. If you blast with soda, then these particles will get in between the panels. They will get inside your cells in all these small cavities. And you will have to clean it up afterwards. And you won't be able to get into all these small cavities. So you're going to capture that soda inside there. And over time, believe me, it's going to start oxidizing and rusting from the inside to the outside. That's why I'm not going to use soda blasting for a chassis or a body like old rusty that is not a good idea now of course if you have a very flat surface you can use soda that doesn't matter uh, if you can rinse it down very well that doesn't matter now the good thing about soda is it's great because it doesn't destroy any uh, rubbers or plastics you can blast on it and i'm going to show you that uh, later on in the video on how good that is it's great to clean up aluminum and engine blocks and all that but i'm not going to use it for the body of the car but even if you do so, you can use dry or wet soda blasting. And wet soda blasting is a mixture of compressed air, soda and water. And that reduces the dust a lot. But we'll talk about this as well when we get further down in the video. So let's have a closer look on this soda and on garnet because these are the two products that I will be using throughout the restoration of Old Rusty. The media is the product that you're going to use to blast with. Now, in the old days, we used to use sand, but that's no longer allowed because that caused the lung disease called silicosis. Soda, I have it right here. And that is a big bag of 25 kilograms of sodium bicarbonate. And it's a white powder, as you can see in this box. That's what it is. And it's very fine. And that's what you can use to clean up aluminum uh, it actually degreases as well and you can use it wet or dry and it does not damage any plastics or any rubber or glass and so on. And it does not damage the metal either, but you can't take a rust off for instance. So uh, I'm not going to use that too often. The problem bit with soda is if you have it for a long time in a bag, 
that it clits together and then you have a problem. So I make this little filter here which I can use to filter the bicarbonate. So if you're ever going to blast with this, I really recommend that you use a zift like this because otherwise your system will clog up and that's the last thing you want to have a clogged up system. So just move it around a bit and you see the parts that are left inside take them out and then squeeze them. So this is nice, very fine white powder, which we call now soda. So now this is ready to be used and you'll see that in a few minutes. So let's look at the next product. So the next product we're gonna look at is what we call Garnet. It comes in different sizes and it is an Australian mineral. See how fine that is? It looks a bit like sand, but it is not. And garnet is a very fine grid and this is kind of your de facto blasting material. You can blast it dry or wet and it will take off the paint very nicely. It also will remove rust and it does not destroy the panel too much but you will have to play with the pressure and the volume and it all depends a bit of course of what the materials you are blasting. If you're going to blast aluminum or you're going to blast copper with this then I would not recommend to use garnet. But if you're using um, this product on steel panels like on Old Rusty, then we should not have a problem. So we looked at two products, soda and garnet, and those are the two products that I will use on Old Rusty, but mainly garnet for the bodywork for all the obvious reasons. If you have any parts on the chassis or so that may have rubbers and I can't remove the rubbers, then I might use a bit of soda and I can switch between one and the other. There's many other products on the market for the media. There's nutshells, there's uh, glass beads, all kind of stuff that you can use all with different purposes. So I really recommend if you intend to blast, please go and see an expert and ask them what is the best product for your specific purpose. Now, let's talk a bit about the gun because we talked about the media, but you can't blast without a blasting gun. So let's look on that. There are many different types and there's the El Cheapo version, which is this one. And all what you need to do with this is then you just stick it into the bag of sand and then you connect the air hose in the back and then basically you can blast. It's what we call a Venturi system. So the uh, media will be sucked up into this hose and then being carried with the air outwards. That's very cheap, a few dollars, but to be very honest, probably not worth the money, at least not to me. Uh, some of them have a gravity fed cup on the top. Uh, they come in different types and models, but it's all the same. It's good for very small things, but not to blast a vehicle as such. And it's not suitable for certain types of blasting material either. The next kind of uh, blasting system or gun is what I have here. It's exactly the same principle as this one. So you're sucking up the media Venturi system and then the compressed air comes in and you just blow it out just like a spray gun. The brush in the front is nothing more than a vacuum uh, cleaner. Uh, it sucks back the dust and the particles back in so the big hose here then recycles it back in this big container. So in this case the media is in the container and it's recyclable. Again this is really good and I like this to work with for small things if you have to weld or something like this but not to blast a complete car. Boat systems are dry systems, so it means you cannot use water to get rid of the dust or anything like that. And on my left, I have another type of gun, and this is what we call an Ibex H2O, and this is model number nine. And this uh, gun right here, you can see it's quite different. Uh, it has a decent trigger, and it allows you on the head to blast with air and water and media, or just dry blasting and you can change the nozzles. Now the main difference between that system and this IBEX system is that the IBEX is a pressurized container. So the media goes inside and then pressure comes in on the side and it pressurizes the whole system. So the media is kind of forced out and you can regulate it here on the side, but we'll look at all that in a few minutes. Where with these systems, you really rely on a Venturi system and you have to suck up uh, the media so it's more cumbersome and it's not that well controlled and the quantity or the quality of uh, 
particles that come out of the gun are not very well controlled. It's going to come out in spurts and it's not always going to be even. And if you really want to blast properly, you want to have a steady flow of your media and your air. And this blasting gun has the nozzle all the way deep in there. You can see that white little thing there. That's the nozzle and that's what all blasting guns have in common. This is the El Cheapo version and you can see again the nozzle in the front. Uh, this is the Ibex gun and this is a professional uh, blasting gun and you can actually see the difference. It's all aluminum. You can change the nozzle and you can blast dry and wet. And again, it has a nozzle which is replaceable. So depending what you want to do, you can use one of those systems. I would say this, don't bother about it. It's good for very small cleanup jobs. So I'm not going to look at it. That it's great also for small local repairs and local sandblasting and you don't want to bring out the big tools. So yeah, it's great for that, but I'm not going to talk about it either because that's not going to help me to work on Old Rusty. So I'm left with what we call the Ibex system. So folks, we looked at three guns and all three of them had something in common. There was the nozzle and the opening of the nozzle will determine how much air volume you're going to need to blast in combination with the pressure. Now the pressure is something you need to set depending on the media you're blasting with and on the object that you're trying to clean. Of course, if you're going to blast on a piece of wood, you don't want high pressure, you want low pressure and a non-abrasive uh, media type. But if I'm going to blast on Old Rusty, I'm going to blast at around six to seven bar and I will check it out first because if you have too much pressure, you can deform the panels. But the diameter of the nozzle will determine the amount of volume you're going to need at a certain pressure. So in the table that you see here, you can actually see a column which talks about the pressure. That's the pressure you want to use to clean your specific object. And then you can look as well at the nozzle opening. How big is the nozzle? And depending on the size of the nozzle, you're going to need a lot of air or less air. Now, in this case, I'm going to run about a 3.5 nozzle, so I will need about a thousand liters of air per minute at seven bar to blast on Old Rusty. Because the gun is one thing, but now you still need a compressor. So we're going to need a compressor that can produce a steady pressure at six to seven bar and can produce the right amount of air. In my case, it's around 1200 liters per minute of air at seven bar. Obviously, a little household compressor like this one, that's not going to cut it. It just can't keep up with that. It doesn't have the ability to produce that kind of a flow of air. So you can forget about this. You can't use these kind of little compressors. Now, this compressor over here, it's a bit of a bigger one, but even a bigger compressor like this one is not going to cut it. This compressor has 300 liters per minute and I need 1200. So it's not going to work. Uh, you could use the big reservoir and this is a 200 liter reservoir that will fill up and then you have a flow for some time and then you need to stop, let it fill up again, blast, stop, blast, stop. That's no way of working. You can't blast a car with a system like that. Small things, yes, but not a complete car. Uh, and on top of that, you're not going to have a steady airflow uh, with a system like this because this is a piston driven uh, compressor and you'll see that in a few minutes, what I mean with that. So this is what we're going to need. A decent compressor that can deliver about 2000 liters of air because you want to have a bit of reserve. So that's what we're going to use uh, as our source for compressed air. So this compressor is diesel driven, a three cylinder Kubota engine. Uh, it is quite powerful. It, it produces about 2000 liters of air per minute at seven bar. That's the maximum it can do. But I have a little bit of play because I only need 1200. So if you're going to get a compressor, either you rent it or you buy one or whatever, make sure that you, it's strong enough that you have a bit of extra volume that it can generate. Otherwise, it's going to be running at its maximum speed all the time. And that's not a good idea. This specific compressor is not a cylinder-based compressor, but a propeller-based compressor. 
I mentioned that this compressor is based on a propeller and this is the propeller case right here and the propeller compressor is able to give you a continuous flow of air at a steady pressure. That's not the case with a compressor with cylinders and pistons because those have to fill up a reservoir underneath or on the side where all the air is collected and then the compressor might stop and then when the pressure goes down a bit the compressor kicks in again so you don't get this kind of steady flow at the steady pressure at lower pressures you may get it but not at higher pressures that is not possible so that's why I really recommend for sandblasting or abrasive blasting I should say to use a propeller based compressor Typical compressors, uh, compressors of this type, they don't have an adjustment for the uh, pressure of the air. It's 7 bar and that's it, or it's 10 bar and that is it. Uh, you have to put the uh, regulation outside and you'll see that because I have that on the IBIX uh, container that we just looked at. So let's crank this up and see uh, if we can get the pressure we are supposed to get. Over here you can actually see the pressure that it's going to generate and I'm just curious to see if it's going to do it, but I'm quite sure it will. It's always good to open up the air uh, when starting. I'm going to let it preheat a little bit. It's not that cold, but still it's always good because it's a diesel, right? You saw while we were running up the compressor it was holding up pretty well it's um, seven bar but as soon as we opened up this valve here you could see it dropping down and it was fully open it dropped down to about five bar and that's because the orifice here or the opening is so big so the compressor couldn't keep up with the volume and it had to drop the pressure and it's a bit the same thing with a nozzle if your nozzle is fairly big and your compressor is not powerful enough you're not going to get the pressure and you're not going to get the airflow now of course uh, if we go into blast we have a 3.5 mil uh, nozzle which is a lot smaller than this so this compressor will just do fine so guys now you would think we're all ready to blast right well the reality is we are not there is something else to talk about before we start blasting sitting I'm sure all of you have been sitting on a terrace on a sunny day and you got your cold soda pop or your beer or your glass, whatever. And what you got is, after a while, a wet surface. You got condensation on the glass because the liquid is cold and outside it's warm, so you get condensation. Well, the same thing is happening with your compressor. When the compressor is compressing air, the air is going to heat up. And that hot air is going to travel through the tubes and the outside air is cooler. So you're gonna get condensation inside the tubes. Now that is really, really something you don't want to get because that's gonna clog up your media, especially if you're gonna blow soda. Uh, really, that is devastating. So you're gonna to have to stop every so often to clean out your system and this is something you don't really want. So condensation is a major issue. So we're gonna need something to cool the air and that's what we call a cooler. Okay, folks, this is the fridge uh, I was talking about. This is the unit that's going to cool down the air, which is coming in from the compressor through this filter, water separation filter, cycles through the fridge and comes back out cooled on this side. And again, another water separation and cleaning uh, filter for the air because the air has to be very clean. This system will avoid any clogging of your system. It avoids condensation inside the system. So it is important. So this unit is going to be sitting in between the compressor and your media container, be it the IBEX or something else, it doesn't really matter, but it's going to assure you that you have cold, clean, dry air coming into your system. And then you have no problems whatsoever. Turn it on at least half an hour before you stop blasting because it is kind of a fridge. So let us all hook it up and then we start blasting. Or did we forgot something? So this is what we forgot, a protective helmet. You don't need to wear a dust mask because you get slightly overpressure inside the helmet through this hose. And this hose is coming from your IBEX filter system. So you get nice clean air. The other good thing is that the glass exists of multiple layers. And if you are um, having a lot of scratches on the front one, you can just peel it off and then you have a fresh screen again. 
There are multiple layers on it. So there's an outer one and an inner one and then even uh, a middle one uh, to protect you for debris and all kind of dust and particles. So I think this is uh, pretty good and you will see me wearing it. The connection is in the back. That's where the hose connects. And I think uh, this is certainly worthwhile the investment. I bought this one and I never regretted it that I did because this is really working fine. So let's hook up the compressor. And this hose is going to the cooling system. Okay, this is the hose coming from the compressor and it's going into the unit. And then we connect the second hose from the cooling unit to the ABEX. We hook up the cold air into the ABEX system, which is here on the bottom. This is the water inlet, by the way, but we're not going to hook that up for the moment. So now we're going to fill up the IBEX system and I'm going to start with Garnet. Not a lot, just a little bit so we can give you a little demo. There's a valve here that closes automatically so you don't need to worry about it. Put the stop up and we're done. On the IBEX system there is an additional output and this is a clean air outlet for your mask and you get very clean air because if you're going to blast a car or whatever, there's going to be a lot of dust flying around and typically you would need to have a mask on, a dust mask or anything like that. But if you have this special pressurized helmet, then you don't have to worry about any of that and it is very comfortable and very safe. And this is kind of your lifeline, I would say. So uh, we'll hook that up to the helmet and then we should be good to go. There's a couple of things we need to do right now and I need to explain it now before the compressor is running because otherwise you won't be able to understand me because it makes a little bit of noise. It's adjusting the pressure on the IBEX. You got the dial there and with this knob you can adjust the pressure. You can only adjust it when the trigger is depressed so you have to start spraying and you'll see me doing that but I won't be talking because it's going to be too noisy. Uh, it's already set to 7 bar and I also will have to adjust the amount of garnet that's going to come into the gun and this is done on the screw on the bottom and you'll see me doing that but I won't be able to talk so let me start up the compressor I'm going to give it some more And you could see how fast this was blasting. It went very fast and in fact it feels pretty smooth as well. So it looks like it took off some metal but it didn't really. It looks quite nice. So I'm going to do the same thing now but I'm now I'm going to wet blast it with garnet. I hooked up the water hose and now we're going to blast with garnet and water. There isn't much of a difference between actually dry and wet blasting with garnet. However, you have far less dust. So we've been blasting with garnet, uh, wet and dry, and the effect on the metal panel was exactly the same. It cleans up very nicely and there's no deformation and no real damage. The wet version is of course far less dust than the dry version, but that's a choice. And of course, when it's wet, it's gonna have faster fly rust than when you're blasting dry. So now let's try soda. So we're going to put some soda in. Not a whole lot. So I'm going to blast this area with soda and then we can see the difference.
you immediately see the difference. This is soda and this is garnet. And with soda, the metal shines because it didn't attack it. It just took the surface paint off, but it didn't took the rust off, as you can see. So that's the difference. So I prefer garnet to blast a car. This is a die cast uh, light material um, and we're going to clean this uh, with soda. Um, there's all kind of debris on it and we have plastic hoses. Uh, we've got some copper there. So I'm going to show you that soda isn't doing any harm to all these plastics. And you saw me blasting real quick, so this is the final result, but of course I did spend a lot of time on it. You all saw me blasting on the plastic here, and you see there's no damage on that plastic whatsoever. I also blasted on the copper, I don't know if you can see that, and that didn't got any damage. So if I was to do this with garnet, that would be a completely different effect. So that's the good thing about soda blasting. So even here on the hose, you see no damage and the copper piece has no damage. It's just cleaned up very nicely. So that's the good thing with soda. It is not aggressive whatsoever. We are nearing the end of the video and you've seen uh, how I'm going to blast Old Rusty. I haven't blasted Old Rusty yet because I needed to get some experience. And that's why it took me a while uh, before I could actually start. I went to a professional store, asked for their advice, and I must have spent at least two, three hours with them, listening to what they had to tell me about the media, about the air dryer, about the compressor, the nozzle types, and all that. That's where I picked it up. And then finally, I got all the kit, and I tried it out on several uh, parts. And now I'm about ready to start blasting Old Rusty. So the next video, you will see me blasting Old Rusty. And as a last note, you might wonder, should you buy or should you rent this kind of equipment? Well, that depends a bit on your work and how much work you have. Renting is always a pain in the butt and it's quite expensive as well. I think renting it is around three, four hundred euros per day and a day is eight running hours on a compressor. You have to go over there, you have to pick it up and then you do your work and you need to drag it back. It's a bit painful, but of course, if it's a one time job, it's not worthwhile buying it. If you do it quite often, and I worked it out, if you do the work about 20 times, then everything is paid off by just going and buying it. And now the question is, what's the price for this? Well, the average price for all what you've seen, uh, the Ibex, the helmet, the hoses, the dryer, and the compressor even, uh, is around 12,000 euros or $12,000. Most of the stuff is new, except the compressor secondhand with warranty. But again, that all depends uh, on what you're going to use this for. I'm going to use this for many things. Blasting cars, blasting old furniture, I'm rebuilding an old house. So for me, this was worthwhile the investment. Maybe for you, it will not. And as a last word, I would say, don't go out and buy cheap systems. It isn't worth the money. You're going to regret it buying it. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in my next video where we're going to blast Old Rusty. Bye-bye.